Hi everyone, I'm Kaya Thomas, an iOS developer at Calm and the creator of the We Read 2 app, a mobile directory of children and young adults, adult books written by authors of color. I'm excited to be here today with you with BitRise to share three quick iOS tips. The first tip is going to be about testing push notifications on the simulator. Starting in Xcode 11.4 and above, Apple has now made it so that we can drag APNS files into the sim to test how our push notifications will look and respond. Before, we had to use third-party applications to do this. So I'm going to show you quickly how you can do it without using any third-party applications. So here we have um, our simulator. We have our APNS file. And as you can see, the main thing that you need in order to drag this so that it will simulate a real push notification is your bundle identifier. Then you format the push notification as it would be formatted on your back end. And from Finder, you just take the file and drag it into the simulator. And you'll see our push notification came up. That's the first tip. The next tip I would like to share is around iOS 14 widget memory. This one comes from Thomas and he is an iOS developer based in France. I was really, really grateful when he tweeted about this. And it's one of the great things about the iOS community online, especially on Twitter, is sharing things that we come across and experience to help each other out. So he, he tweeted about the fact that you can't use more than 30 megabytes of RAM in the new widget feature for iOS 14. Now, this is really important, especially for folks who are going to be putting images in their widgets. And I ran across the same problem. So if you're experiencing crashes when your widget loads, um, may want to check the image sizes if you have images in your widget. And reducing the image sizes could potentially really help you. And if you have a really memory intensive widget, it may not work well. So make sure that you're testing out how much memory you're using in your widget and that may solve your crashing problems. So that's tip two. Okay, and our last tip is going to be about the accessibility inspector, which you can easily bring up by just going in Spotlight and searching for accessibility inspector. And the accessibility inspector allows you to navigate in your app on the simulator as you would using voiceover on the device. So here you can see we have the accessibility inspector up and our simulator here with the just a simple app. So you want to select the target button and the target button will allow you to select a specific element on the screen. So we'll collect, select the hello world and you'll see it will tell you here what the type is and what the label is that will be read aloud to the voiceover user. You can also use these navigation buttons to navigate between elements on the screen. And this one is really important because it will simulate what is done when a voiceover user is swiping between various elements on the screen. So if you click the next button, it will select what is the next element in the hierarchy, which here is just the press me button. So I highly recommend using the accessibility inspector to go through your app and ensure that all the elements that you expect to be accessible are accessible. Thank you so much. I was excited to share with you these three quick iOS tips and make sure you join us for the State of Swift panel with BitRise.